12,000 deaths reported in the past 24 hours, 30 lakh 35,000 tested positive in one day. And in Bangabund who BPL cricket at Nepal, Kurna Tigers beat Phillips Sunrisers by 9 wickets. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the news at 10 on BTV, BTV World and BTV Chattrugam Centre. I am Faria Adil Shadmo with you. We have just had the highlights, now let's move on to the news in details. Prasim Muhammad Abdul Hamid urged the judiciary to continue its efforts so that litigants can get justice without any harassment. The president made the call when Chief Justice Hassan Foy said they called on him at Bongo Bhavun this evening. After the meeting, President's press secretary Muhammad Jainul Abedin told the reporters that during the meeting, the Chief Justice apprised the president of overall activities of the Supreme Court, especially the activities of virtual courts in COVID-19 pandemic. The Chief Justice also apprised the president of the steps taken to reduce the pending cases. Noting that the judiciary is the last shelter house for the people to get justice, President Abdul Hamid expressed hope that the judiciary would be able to fulfill the expectations of the people under the leadership of the new Chief Justice. President's Office Secretary Shamput Borua, Military Secretary Major General S.M. Salahuddin Islam and Secretary Attach Muhammad Ohidul Islam Khan were present during the meeting. Newly appointed High Commissioner of Canada to Bangladesh, Lily Nichols, presented her credentials to President Mohammed Abdul Hamid at Bongo Bhavan this afternoon. On arrival at Bongo Bhavan, the new envoy was given Guard of Honor by a contingent of President Guard Regiment. Welcoming the new envoy, President Mohammed Abdul Hamid said, Canada is one of the development partners of Bangladesh and largest export destinations. Noting that excellent relations exist between the two countries, the President called upon Canadian investors to invest in various potential sectors of Bangladesh. Lauding the Canada's role in resolving the Rohingya issue, President Abdul Hamid expressed hope that Canada would continue its pressure on Myanmar for safe repatriation of Rohingyas to their homeland. President Abdul Hamid thanked the government and people of Canada for providing assistance to Bangladesh with vaccines to combat COVID-19. During the meeting, the new envoy of Canada sought the President's cooperation in discharging her duties. Foreign Secretary and Secretaries to the President were present. The Cabinet Division has issued a notice to extending the ongoing curves to February 21 in order to tackle the surge in coronavirus and its Omicron variant. According to the notice, gatherings of more than 100 people at social, political, religious and state programs at open and closed door spaces are not allowed. Besides, in order to take part in these gatherings, people have to show vaccine certificates or negative reports of COVID tests carried out in PCR lab within 24 hours. The notice also says teachings at classes in all schools and colleges as well as equivalent educational institutions will remain suspended till February 21. Bangladesh reported 33 COVID-19 deaths and 11,596 infections in a single day. Current infection rate was reported 25.8%. 86%. Director General of Health Services DGHS in his routine daily statement today said the death toll has risen to 28,494 from coronavirus and the tally of infections has risen to 18,35,776. The recovery count rose to 15,81,092 after another 5,955 patients recovered. The statement said 25.86% of 44,843 samples tested positive. DGH statistics showed that the people infected from the beginning 86.13% recovered and 1.55% died. 
Road Transport and Bridges Minister and Awamili General Secretary Obadul Qadir has said the anti-corruption drive will be continued and none will be spared for doing graft. He came up with the assertion while briefing journalists after inauguration of modernized BRTC Bhavan this morning. Mentioning that Bangladesh was the champion in corruption during the BNP government regime, Obadul Qadir said the government of Sheikh Hasina has taken zero-tolerance policy to free the country from corruption. The Road Transport and Bridges Minister asked the authorities concerned to bring back the reputation of BRTC at any cost. <laughs> Earlier, the minister visited Bangabundhu Liberation War and the Bangladesh corner of BRTC Bhavan. BRTC chairman Mohammad Tajul Islam, among others, was present at that time. The government is willing to run efficient service instead of older ones to ensure smooth services and avoid accidents in the river routes. Authorities say a total of 53 ferries run in six routes. According to River Vessels Ordinance 1976, a vessel is allowed to run a maximum period of 40 years after registration. But many ferries run even after 40 years into registrations. Responding to a query on the issue, State Minister for Shipping Khalid Mahmoud Choudhury says it happens because of shortages in ferries. River routes will see new ferries replacing old ones, he added. However, BIWTC chairman says all the ferries can ensure services after renovations. The government has announced names of 24 eminent citizens for awarding the prestigious Ekushi 2022. Ekushi Baduk is the second highest civilian award of country which is being to them for outstanding contributions in their respective fields. A press release issued by the Cultural Affairs Ministry said these in Dhaka today. Mustafa Emimuddin, posthumous, and Mirza Tofasal Hossein Mukul, posthumous, won the award in the field of language movement. Valiant freedom fighter Al Haj Principal Muhammad Motiw Rahman, Fred Mwadjim Ali, posthumous, KABM Rahman, and Amzad Ali Khandukar have been nominated under the category of Liberation War. Zina Barkutullah has been nominated for dance, Nuzul Islam Babu posthumous, Iqbal Ahmed and Mahmoud Rahman Benu for music, Khalid Mahmoud Khan posthumous, Afzal Hussain and Masum Aziz for acting. Emi Malik won the award for journalism while Mohammad Anwar Hussain won in science and technology and Professor Dr. Gautam Buddho Dash won in education. Isim Abraham Lincoln and Shankuraj Gansri Mahathir have been nominated in the social service category. But Kamal Choudhury and Jharna Dash Purukar Sto won the award in language and literature category. Besides Dr. Muhammad Abdul Sattar Mondal, Dr. Muhammad Enamul Haq, Dr. Shahnaj Sultana and Dr. Jannatul Fedos from the Rice Research Institute have been nominated under the research category. Every recipient of the Kushipaduk will be given cash money, gold medal, replica and crest.
And now, international news. U.S. President Joe Biden is to send extra troops to Europe this week amid continuing fears of a Russian invasion of Ukraine, the Pentagon says. Some 2,000 troops will be sent from Fort Bragg, North Carolina, to Poland and Germany, and a further 1,000 already in Germany will go to Romania. Moscow denies planning to invade but has deployed an estimated 1 lakh troops near Ukraine's borders. It called the U.S. deployment destructive. The tensions come eight years after Russia annexed Ukraine's southern Crimea Peninsula and backed a bloody rebellion in the eastern Donbass region. The World Health Organization's WHO Europe director says the continent could soon enter a long period of tranquility in the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Hans Klug cited high vaccination rates, the end of winter, and the less severe nature of the Omicron variant. It comes as a number of European nations and COVID-19 restrictions. Dr. Klug said some 12 million new virus cases were detected across Europe last week, the highest recorded, but said officials have not seen a significant spike in those needing critical hospital care. Meanwhile, in the last 24 hours, the world has witnessed 30 lakh 34,000 new coronavirus cases with over 12,000 deaths. COVID-19 global death toll crosses more than 57 lakh 21,000 and 38 crore 62 lakh 49,000 people have been infected globally. Besides, 30 crore 59 lakh 39,000 people have recovered from the virus so far. Election Commission has decided to send a letter to Bangladesh Nationalist Party BNP to know about the appointment of lobbyists in the United States of America and its cost. The decision was taken at a meeting of the Election Commission held at the Nirbachan Bhabun at Agargao in the capital today. Election Commission Secretary Mohammad Humayun Kubir Khandukar disclosed this at a press briefing after an issue meeting. He said, BNP did not show any kind of expenses about the appointment of lobbies in their annual report of income and expenditure. The EC Secretary also said Election Commission has no capability and legal structure to investigate the matter of appointment of lobbies to buy BNP abroad. But EC can take action if any investigative organization of the government made proper investigation on the issue. The Election Commission held meeting today following an application submitted by the Foreign Ministry. The EC Secretary also said four agendas including reception of the Freedom Fighter were discussed at the meeting. And now news on weather. Weather forecast valid till 6 p.m. tomorrow said light to moderate rain or thunder showers accompanied by temporary gusty wind is likely to occur at many places over Rangpur, Rajshahi, Maimon Singh, Dhaka and Silla divisions and at a few places over Kulna, Borishal and Chattogam divisions with moderately heavy falls at places over the country. Moderate to thick fog may occur at places over the river basins of the southern part and light to moderate fog may occur elsewhere over the country during midnight to morning. Night temperature may remain nearly unchanged and day temperature may fall by 2 to 3 degrees Celsius over the country. Now to this maximum and minimum temperature in divisional cities. Maximum 22.8 and minimum 12.8 degrees Celsius in Rangpur. Maximum 26.6 and minimum 13.5 degrees Celsius in Rajshahi. Maximum 23.7 and minimum 14.6 degrees Celsius in Mamising. Maximum 22.3 and minimum 15.4 degrees Celsius in Silat. Maximum 26.6 and minimum 17.2 degrees Celsius in Dhaka. Maximum 29 and minimum 18.5 degrees Celsius in Kulna. Maximum 27.6 and minimum 17.9 degrees Celsius in Borishal. And maximum 26.5, minimum 15.5 degrees Celsius in Chattogram Division. 
The lowest temperature of the country was recorded 8.5 degrees Celsius at Tetulia in Portugal today. The weather forecast for next three days says the cold wave may continue in the northern part of the country. In the capital, the night temperature may rise by 2 to 3 degrees Celsius on Saturday and Sunday. The sky in Taka may remain cloudy tomorrow. And now, news on sports. Kona Tigers beat Phillips and Risers by nine wickets in the first match of the day of Bongobuns who beat their cricket in Dhaka today. Phillips and Risers batted first and scored 142 runs for five in the stipulated 20 overs at Mepu Sheribanga National Stadium. Mohamed Mithun scored 72 runs for Phillips and Risers. In a reply, Kona Tigers reached their victory target and scored 144 runs for one in 14 overs, two balls. Another Fletcher was unbeaten on 71 runs for Kulna. In the second match of the day, Kumula Victorians defeated Chattogram Challengers by nine wickets. Earlier, Chattogram Challengers batted first and scored 138 runs for eight in the rain interrupted 18 overs match. Will Jack scored 57 runs for Chattogram in reply. Kumula Victorians reached their revised victory target of 144 runs over one with nine balls remaining. Emil Kais was unbeaten on 81 runs while Litonda scored 53 runs. And to end the bulletin, headlines once again. Judiciary must continue endeavour to ensure hassle-free justice to people seeking justice, says President Muhammad Abdul Hamid. No classroom lesson as ongoing corona restrictions extended until February 21. Current infection slightly downward as country detects little over 11,500 contaminations in last 24 hours. Anti-corruption drive will continue and no one involved in graft will be spared, once Obadul Kadir. Twenty-four eminent persons named for Ekushri Paduk 2022 for unique contribution in respective fields. Death toll and corona infection on the rise around the world as over 12,000 deaths reported in past 24 hours. 30 lakh 35,000 tested positive in one day. In Bangabandhu BPL cricket at Mirpur Kona Tigers with select sunrisers by 9 wickets. <laughs>